McLaren is one of the oldest teams in Formula One, having competed every year since 1966. Over the years, they've cultivated a legacy of excellence, boasting a roster of legendary drivers like Nicky Lauda, Alan Prost, and Lewis Hamilton. McLaren is renowned as one of the most successful teams in F1 history. But how did this storied team come to be? Let's find out. Bruce McLaren, a New Zealand race car driver, had a great time racing for a British team called Cooper in Formula One. But Bruce wanted to try something different. He wanted to run in a series called the Tasman Series. In this series, cars with more significant engines could race, unlike the ones in Formula One. The Tasman Series used 2.5-litre motors, in contrast to the 1.6-litre engines of Formula One. Bruce asked his bosses at Cooper if he could race in the Tasman Series with more significant engines, but they said no. They wanted to stick to the Formula One engine they usually used. Bruce didn't give up. He decided to start his racing team. So in 1963, he began Bruce McLaren Motor Racing. He planned to race with his friend, Timmy Meyer, in custom-made cars. Bruce's new team did well, winning the Tasman Series in 1964. But then something sad happened. Timmy Meyer died in a car crash during practice for the last race. Bruce was distraught. He had lost his friend and teammate, but he didn't stop chasing his dreams. After Timmy's accident, Bruce asked Teddy Meyer for help. Together they bought a sports car from someone named Roger Pensk. Teddy Meyer liked the idea of working with Bruce, so he joined Bruce's team and became a big part of it. While Bruce was busy with his team, he still found time to race. He raced in sports car events in the UK and North America. He even ran in the Tasman Series again in 1965 with a famous racer named Phil Hill. But Bruce noticed that Cooper's racing could have been better than before. So he made a big decision. In 1966, he decided to race with his cars. It was a brave move that changed everything for his team. Bruce McLaren's racing team burst onto the scene at Monaco. It was a big moment for them, but their debut was cut short after just nine laps due to a big problem with their car. They sprung a leak, which ended their first race. It was a tough start, but they were determined to bounce back. Their car, the M2B, was designed by Robin Hurd, but it didn't quite live up to expectations. They also had some issues with the engines they chose. They went with a 3-litre Ford Indy engine and a Serenissima V8, but they could have been more robust and reliable. Even though they managed to score a point in Britain, with the Serenissima V8, they were disappointed with how things were going. But Bruce McLaren wasn't one to give up easily. In 1967, he decided to switch things up and try out a British racing motors V12 engine. Unfortunately, there were some delays in getting the engine ready. So they had to start the season with a modified Formula 2 car, called the M4B. It had a smaller 2.1-litre BRM V8 engine, but didn't perform as well as they'd hoped. They later built a new car called the M5A, specifically for the V12 engine, but even that didn't bring them success that they sought. Their best result was a fourth place finish at Monaco. But things started to look up in 1968 when Denny Hume, a fellow New Zealander and the 1967 champion joined the team. They had a new car, the M7A, designed by Robin Hurd and powered by the famous Cosworth DFV engine. Bruce McLaren won the race of champions and Denny Hume won the international trophy. Then Bruce McLaren secured the team's first championship win at the Belgian Grand Prix. Denny Hume went on to win the Italian and Canadian Grand Prix later that year helping the team finish second in the Constructors' Championship. The following year, McLaren kept making improvements. They updated the M7 and achieved three podium finishes. They tried something new with a four-wheel drive car called the M9A, but it didn't work well. Derek Bell drove it at the British Grand Prix. Still, Bruce McLaren described it as trying to write your signature with somebody jogging your elbow. Despite the challenges, McLaren always pushed the boundaries and looked for ways to improve. In 1970, McLaren faced a heartbreaking loss when Bruce McLaren tragically passed away in a crash while testing the new M8D Can-Am car. It was a devastating blow, but the team rallied together under the leadership of Teddy Mayer. Denny Hume continued to lead the charge, with Dan Gurney and Peter Gethin joining him. Gurney showed early promise by winning the first two Can-Am events, but later left the team mid-season. 
leaving Geffen to step up. Despite their efforts, the team struggled in 1971. Failing to secure a win, Hume led the opening round in South Africa, but retired due to a broken suspension. Gethin later left for BRM, leaving Hume and Jackie Oliver to carry on. However, 1972 brought a glimmer of hope as the team's performance improved significantly. Hume clinched the team's first Grand Prix win in South Africa, and he, along with Peter Revson, achieved 10 podium finishes propelling the team to third place in the Constructors' Championship. At Watkins Glen, McLaren gave Jody Schechter his Formula One debut, marking a new chapter for the team. In the 1973 season, he introduced Gordon Kapuk's remarkable creation, the McLaren M23. Inspired by the best features of McLaren's previous cars and Lotus's iconic 72, the M23 became a cornerstone of the team's four-year success. Hume won in Sweden, while Revson claimed his first Grand Prix wins in Britain and Canada, showcasing the car's prowess. In 1974, Emerson Fittipaldi, a former world champion with Lotus, joined McLaren, bringing renewed hope to the team. With wins in Argentina, Brazil, Belgium and Canada, Fittipaldi led McLaren to their first Drivers' Championship. With Fittipaldi clinching the title, it was a monumental achievement, and the team also secured their first Constructors' Championship that same season. Despite a somewhat challenging 1975, with Fittipaldi finishing second to Nicky Lauda, McLaren remained competitive with the M23. Jochen Mass, who replaced Hume, even secured his only Grand Prix win in Spain, adding to the team's legacy. The dawn of a new era emerged in 1981, when McLaren Aaron merged with Ron Dennis's project for racing. This move revitalized the team, leading to a string of victories. From 1984 to 1986, Nicky Lauda and Alan Prost dominated the World Championships, again bringing glory to McLaren. In 1988, Ayrton Senna joined McLaren, ushering in a new era of success. As McLaren Hondas dominated the circuit, Senna clinched his first World Championship the following year. However, tensions between Senna and Prost reached a boiling point, leading to Prost's departure after the 1989 season. Senna remained with McLaren until 1993, leaving a legacy of triumphs and three World Drivers' Championships. His departure marked the end of an illustrious chapter in McLaren's history. Still, his impact on the team and the sport will never be forgotten. In the mid-1990s, McLaren faced a challenging time when Honda, their engine supplier for Formula One, decided to leave the sport. This departure and the exit of star drivers Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost proved a significant setback for the team. To overcome this setback, McLaren formed a crucial partnership with Mercedes-Benz to provide engines. Additionally, they made a strategic move by hiring the talented designer Adrian Newey from rival team Williams. These strategic moves eventually paid off, leading to a period of success for McLaren. Driver Mika Hakkinen clinched back-to-back -back titles in 1998 and 1999, showcasing the team's resurgence. However, despite their success, McLaren's most recent constructors' title remains the one they won in 1998. Throughout the early 2000s, McLaren consistently performed well, finishing as runners-up in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships for two consecutive years. However, the team faced a challenging start to the 2004 season, struggling to secure points in the initial races. Despite a strong comeback, McLaren finished the 2004 season in fifth place. The following year, the team showed promising performance with the fastest car on the grid. Still, reliability issues prevented them from clinching the Constructors' title. In 2007, McLaren faced a setback when they were stripped of their Constructors' points and fined for possessing confidential Ferrari data. This incident highlighted the intense rivalry between teammates Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso with both narrowly missing out on the driver's title. In 2008, McLaren celebrated Lewis Hamilton's remarkable achievement of winning the driver's championship after nearly a decade. However, they fell short of securing the constructor's crown, finishing in second place. The subsequent year, they presented challenges for McLaren, with drivers Hamilton and Kovalainen needing help to score points. Despite this, the team worked hard to turn their car into a race-winning machine, securing victories in Hungary and Singapore. In 2010, McLaren's car demonstrated reliability. It excelled in damp conditions, leading the team to lead the standings for the first half of the season. However, they ultimately finished second overall. Throughout the following years, McLaren continued to showcase competitive performance, finishing as runners-up and consistently challenging the dominant teams. Despite occasional setbacks, McLaren remained formidable on the Formula One grid. In 2017, McLaren faced disappointment for the third consecutive season with underwhelming results using Honda engines. 
This led to the termination of their partnership with Honda, and a switch to Renault Power for the 2018 season. While the transition to Renault brought some improvements, McLaren faced challenges maintaining their performance. However, the team showcased resilience, securing notable results and finishing sixth in the standings. In subsequent seasons, McLaren's partnership with Renault yielded positive results with the team consistently performing as the top midfield contender. Notably, McLaren celebrated their first podium in five years in 2019, marking a significant milestone for the team. In 2020, McLaren's consistent performances propelled them to third place in the standings, surpassing their midfield rivals. The team also announced a partnership with Mercedes Power for the 2021 season. The 2021 season marked a triumphant moment for McLaren, which secured its first win since 2012 and achieved a 1-2 finish at Monza. Despite this success, McLaren faced stiff competition and finished fourth overall in the standings. 2022, McLaren encountered challenges, dropping to fifth place in the standings. Last season, McLaren faced a sluggish start but soon emerged as a frequent contender for podium finishes. Lando Norris and the impressive rookie teammate, Oscar Piastri, showcased their skills, collectively securing nine podium finishes throughout the season. As a result of their strong performances, McLaren climbed to fourth place overall in the Constructors' Championship standings. Subscribe now to our channel and hit the notification bell to ensure you never miss an update on the latest F1 news, more gripping insights, thrilling analysis and exclusive content as we continue to bring you the most exciting story straight from the world of motorsports.